Responders continue to address environmental impacts from the 800 foot container ship aground on Elbow Reef in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Every year, NOAA responds to thousands of natural and human induced incidents threatening life, property, and natural resources. During such incidents, NOAA is mandated to protect natural resources, provide weather data, and chart navigable waterways. To better fulfill this mission, NOAA conducted the first Safe Sanctuaries exercise in April of 2005 to bring together NOAA resources and expertise with other agencies for a hypothetical oil spill in the Florida Keys National Marine Just Sanctuary. Briefly, uh, briefly, the situation is, uh, as we know, the OGMB uh, Portland Crater uh, went aground on the elbow. Uh, it's, uh, it's currently leaking fuel, and there's also a secondary release. The Elbow is an outlying reef in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. This marine protected area is one of 13 marine sanctuaries and one coral reef ecosystem reserve in the United States. The Florida Keys is the nation's only living barrier coral reef. This exercise highlights NOAA's finest in emergency response and demonstrates its wide array of assets and capabilities. Under the Oil Pollution Act, the U.S. Coast Guard assumes the lead authority to direct an emergency response in the marine environment as the federal on-scene coordinator. In a significant incident such as this, the on-scene coordinator calls upon a cadre of specialists from around the country and assembles them in an incident command post, in this case, the Monroe County Emergency Response Center. Key among them is NOAA's scientific support coordinator, who serves as a science advisor to the on-scene coordinator. For this exercise, the NOAA coordinator leads the environmental unit that will orchestrate the delivery of data and observations acquired from NOAA scientists and others. Among the initial information needed for the response is figuring out where the leaking oil is headed. The scientific support coordinator dispatches an oceanographer to make real-time observations of ocean currents and oil movement at the grounding site. She does this by dropping biodegradable dye pellets from the helicopter and photographs the dispersal of the dye. This green dye mimics oil and gives the oceanographer an accurate view of sea surface currents. Okay, is that what I need? When she returns, she immediately reports the information to the scientific support coordinator in the incident command post. They combine these observations with others in the environmental unit who have been working around the clock to respond to the oil spill. There's a Zeddy right here. As soon as the spill was reported, the scientific support coordinator also requested a team from the Center for Operational Oceanographic Products and Services. Working with the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary staff, they assembled and deployed a quick response buoy to collect real-time data at the wreck site. Using sound waves, this acoustic Doppler current profiling package measures ocean currents throughout the water column and transmits that information via satellite and radio straight into the command post. Other team members monitor a pair of surface current mapper stations that were installed along the coast. These towers broadcast and receive high frequency radio waves along the sea surface and provide another measurement of the surface currents, but on a wider scale. Process signals are also uplinked via satellite to the command post. The data from the surface current stations and current profiling buoy are verified with the aerial observations made on site by the oceanographer. I anything that would indicate that, but I'm trying to think of would I have seen it if it was there. It might have been the water so clear. But more data are available and needed. The oceanographer also teams up with a meteorologist from the National Weather Service. He is a warning coordination meteorologist 
and hourly he receives two critical updates on weather forecasts. One comes from NOAA's weather forecast office in Key West. Unlike yesterday with the true east direction that we might have expected, it looks like uh, the models are indicating that it might be more of an east-northeast by uh, early afternoon hours. These are the local experts who understand the daily weather patterns in the Florida Keys and can make the most sense out of the information coming from NOAA satellites, radar, and their own observations. During a sensitive event such as an oil spill, the Key West office also dispatches an incident meteorologist dedicated to monitoring the weather specifically on the wreck site. With assistance from the sanctuary, the incident meteorologist installed a real-time monitoring system on the nearest accessible platform to the grounding site. This instrument transmits real-time observations of wind speed, wind direction, and temperature back to a small satellite dish that was set up in the field operations center in Key Largo. With the most current data and frequent observations, the incident meteorologist prepares the second source of updates for the warning coordination meteorologist in the command post. I have a uh, forecast here ready to go. That's what I was just coordinating with the um, with your office there, and I can go ahead and send that to you in the next 10, 15 minutes. Integrating all the field data, the meteorologist presents the most current forecast back to the environmental unit. With all the real-time information now in hand, the scientific support coordinator and oceanographer contact NOAA's scientific support team in Seattle, Washington. Hey Tom, this is Debbie and Brad and Matt here. Hey there. Hey there. Hey Bushy. Hey, Mark Miller, CJ and Bushy here on the war room. At the vessel site, we did a die drop and the currents were about six tenths, seven tenths of a knot to the north. The team in Seattle will now work quickly to compile all the available data in computer programs and build a trajectory model for where the oil is expected to go. At least twice per day, the Seattle team updates the trajectory model. This critical information is faxed to the command post and delivered immediately to the scientific support coordinator. Whenever there is new information available, the scientific support coordinator and other NOAA specialists brief the unified command. The Unified Command is the lead group in the command post, composed of the Sanctuary Manager, the State and Federal On-Scene Coordinators, and the responsible party for the ship grounding. The Unified Command and the Planning Unit will use the latest trajectory model and other information to best direct the course of field operations for the response. The Planning Unit calls in NOAA's Navigation Response Team. The reef bottom surrounding the wreck site is variable and difficult to navigate especially for large vessels. So the navigation response team uses a sophisticated side-scan sonar that creates real-time high-resolution images of the sea floor. After mapping several transects, the strips are mosaic together into a map. The map can then be coupled with marine charts and enables the planning unit to develop a salvage plan that will be the least disruptive to the sanctuary's sensitive environment. As information on the oil's fate becomes clearer, the Scientific Support Coordinator prepares shoreline characterization and assessment teams to evaluate shoreline impacts. These assessment teams include members from state and federal agencies and the responsible party, some of whom have never measured effects of an oil so spill before. To standardize the assessment team efforts, NOAA runs training for the team members before they go into the field. Given the potential spill trajectories, the Scientific Support Coordinator deploys teams on two locations along Key Largo's eastern shore. They specifically record percent cover of oil on affected beaches and wildlife that has been oiled, such as seabirds or turtles. Returning to the command post, the assessment team leader presents the team findings to the environmental unit. The northernmost area is where we saw the heaviest hit by oil, and it was along also on scene is one of NOAA's Natural Resource Damage Assessment Teams. This team collaborates with other groups from the Department of the Interior and State of Florida to work most effectively with the responsible party. This damage assessment team sends out assessment experts and sanctuary divers. They gather information on the natural and cultural resources that were harmed and at risk from the ship grounding and oil spill. Historical and cultural resources impart important knowledge of maritime history in the region. In this incident, the Portsmouth trader ran aground on a 1917 wreck, the city of Washington. Uh, due to the oil spill, we were only able to assess the injury to the 
uh, anchor damage that, that occurred and we found two anchor scars. A marine archaeologist from the sanctuary evaluates the injury to the city of Washington as it represents a significant historic site and is listed on the Florida Keys shipwreck trail. Using information provided by the navigation response and damage assessment teams, the Unified Command develops the best strategy to extricate the trader and avoid further injury to both the reef and the historical wreck. The Portsmouth Trader exercise also provides an important opportunity for NOAA to evaluate and improve its response and safety procedures. To check the accuracy of the oil trajectory model and provide another set of observations to understand surface currents in the Florida Keys, 2,000 wooden drift cards were released near the grounding site. The reef structure, tidal currents, Gulf Stream and winds make this area tricky to predict currents. And over the next two days, oceanographers monitor the drift card movement. In this case, these biodegradable cards move straight into the mangroves along Key Largo's eastern shore, confirming the trajectory model outputs created earlier in the response. The public is reminded to avoid touching the oiled areas or wildlife due to human health concerns and possible wildlife injury. Throughout a spill response, public safety is also a key concern. NOAA sends out an all-hazards radio broadcast, warning people of natural and man-made disasters. The Safe Sanctuaries exercise and real groundings like it represent continuing risks to our coral reefs, shorelines, and marine resources. NOAA recognizes these threats and continually develops and tests effective response plans to protect life, commerce, and our natural and cultural resources. It's never going to come out good. I mean, it's, it's always bad because somebody loses, but it can come out better if everybody's working together. If you've got a cooperative RP, if you've got you know, the Coast Guard is, is being able to play the role they need to play, if all the state agencies and the local communities are able to play the roles they can play. If NOAA gets to play the role we can play, then you bring everything together, people cooperate, and it'll come out less bad than it could otherwise.